It's YouTube Wednesday. Psst. To uh, make our snake, there are two different kinds of pipe insulation. Both kinds will work, but I do think that one works a little bit better than the other. Uh, this is pipe insulation uh, that we are used to. The good thing about it is that it comes already sealed together to be a tube. Uh, there's a glue line right here. It's kind of hard to see. Hopefully you guys can see that line where those pieces are glued together. And uh, on the end, you can, if you have to, pull it apart a bit. You know, uh, it will come together at that seam. It'll come apart at that seam. It's not all the way through it, but it's scored. Uh, so it's just something to keep in mind on this one. But it's also very stiff. You can see that it, uh, it holds its own shape. Now you can heat gun it and that'll, you can change its shape that way. Then there's this stuff here, which is very supple. It comes with plastic over uh, the two ends and you can peel that. Now you can put it over the pipe, peel it, and then stick it together. I'm gonna go ahead and stick this whole thing together now because I want it to be a snake, so I want it to be as tube-like as possible. Along with this, uh, insulation, which is the basic shape of the snake. Uh, I'm going to put a wire in each one of in in this one. I'm going to put a wire in this one so I can make it bendable and poseable. And in this one, I'm just going to heat gun it into the shape that I want. So I want to take this straight snake onto set, heat gun it, and then put it in the position that I want because it's going to stay in that in that pose. But I can't have a nice arched neck on it. Uh, it's it's also pretty good. This is about seven bucks for a piece and this is about two dollars a piece so while i think this is better this is more cost effective if i had to do 50 big old snakes what i would end up doing is i would make you know five or ten hero snakes out of this and then all my backup snakes would be out of this while it's straight i want to put my scales on it and normally painting is your last step but once I taper it, it's going to actually be a little bit harder to get the scale pattern on here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, paint it first. Painting scales can be a bear. So I got some things to make it easier uh, on me from the dollar store. I bought a package of hair claws. Uh, these are 12 for a dollar. And that's these little guys right here. And I have a hair scrunchie. The hair scrunchie, I am going to find its cord. When you find its cord, you can peel it all the way back. And there's a string right there. And that's, that's not a hair scrunchie, it's a bath scrubby. It's a bath scrubby. And uh, there's a string right there. That's holding this whole thing together. Put my scissors in. All right, now this is actually one long tube. And it's a long tube with a net pattern. I'm gonna put it over top of my insulation, use the scrunchie to hold it down tight, and that's how I'm gonna be able to spray paint. It's already black, it's already dark. Then I can just spray paint my snake to make it have the right scale pattern. So let me show you what I have here. It's a snake. You know, uh, we, we have a snake. You certainly could um, use spray adhesive and attach this down to the foam and use that as your scale pattern. What I'm doing, uh, it would, you would add a dollar to each snake because you're buying a new bath scrubby for each snake. But what I'm doing is I'm gonna use it as a stencil. I'm gonna grab some spray paint and I'm gonna paint through this. That's why I want it down there nice and tight. And then when I peel it off, I'll have the, the nice colored scales and I will have um, black in between because the foam is black. 
Satin oregano is the color. Paint them any color you want your snakes to be. Let that dry. While we are waiting on the body to dry, let's work on his head. I have a chunk of EVA foam. It's the floor mat foam. Um, and I'm going to use it to make the snake's head. Uh, I have a piece here that I took off of the other one, uh, and I just I used it for length. And I have just carved the heads out of this, but you don't get them to look as venomous because the head is the same exact width as the, the body. I'm going to use this actually as kind of what the neck will be, even though I'm going to pare the neck down. All right, and I just drew a snake head shape. I just did a lot of Google image research to figure out what the shape is. And if you look at venomous and non-venomous snakes, uh, it actually gives you a good bit of info on that. Um, but now I'm going to modify this a little bit because of how uh, I'm going to make it. I'm going to go ahead and cut this half out. I'm going to fold this over so that I can trace out the other side right here. Tracing out just a portion of the head, just the back half basically. So now I have a piece that will go right in here, and I can fold this over, and I'm going to have the basis of my snake head. All right? So i got to glue all this together, and to make this fold easier, I'm going to cut a V right here. And that just cut out a little notch out of this, so now this folds over even easier. That material's out of the way. This material goes in here. Fold, fold. And I will glue all that together with contact cement. You can paint on contact cement, no problem. I'm going to use a sprayer. My contact cement is good and dry now. So now this I will take to the belt sander in order to flesh it out a little bit more. That is a much calmer shape. I took out the harshness, but I've given this nice arrow shape to the head, which is, uh, you know, Google image search uh, for a drawing of a venomous snake head. That's the basic shape. I have my head here. Now, I'm building on my phone. I needed my phone to pull up a visual reference so I could mark where the eyes go. I have these uh, three quarter of an inch balls. I'd probably go half inch if I had the chance. This is what I had around. But I'm not unhappy with how this looks either. So uh, I have to make a space. If I just set these on here, he's very googly eyed. I don't want him googly eyed, so I have to make a recessed area for that. And I'm just marking about how much I need to take away with <clears throat> the first thing I'll use is uh, probably a Dremel and then I'll go to a soldering iron for detail. Alright, so now that ball fits down in there nice and snug and that's the look that I want. So now I'm going to do the same on the other side for the other eye and uh, 
then I'll show you how I dress this to make this look nice. Now both my eyes ride nice and low. I'm going to correct the shape of them with some real thin uh, craft foam that, uh, you know, it's just the real thin stuff. The foam sheets, uh, Michael's Craft Store, Dollar Tree has it. I'm going to go ahead and cut a circle out. I know how big that is. I cut a circle about the same, a little bigger than, than that ball there. There we go, black on black, circle, about that, but based on the size of your eye. And if you have an eye, like a stuffed animal eye, that you can just stab in, well, even better. Your life is simpler than mine. But again, you use what you have on hand to keep costs down. Okay, and I'm gonna cut this in half. There we go. And let's glue it. All right, and again, I've got to wait about five minutes for that to dry because uh, contact cement, you really want it to be dry when, uh, when you bond them together. And I got a lot of extra on here. I'm going to go ahead and thin that out with uh, a spare piece of foam. While this is drying, um, I'm going to go ahead and take the snake skin uh, or the, the tube off to reveal our snake skin. And I'll say, paint whatever pattern you want on this now. If you want a, a rattlesnake, do that diamond pattern on the back of it. I'm just going for something real simple. To show you guys the concept. Once you guys have the concept, you can knock it out. I am removing the clips just by pulling them out of the net. Now that leaves me with this. color the more uh, the more these scales will stand out and you can always throw a bit of black light spray paint on there to liven them up but I didn't have to do any work aside from put on that tube spray paint and wait show you what I'm doing As the kids say, bam. That gives a nice evil look to the snake. It adds those bumps on top of the head. Now, I solder iron this head. So I have my soldering iron here. And I'm going to use it to put some details in. Uh, I'm going to use it, actually, to define the mouth. I'm going to use my natural hole that kind of happens here. But I'm not going to use that line because the mouth isn't 100%. I'll draw a marker line here for you. So the mouth, I'm going to go underneath of this middle line of those two pieces and give a little more strength to the top of the snake jaw than to the bottom. I am in the mold room. Are you going to walk a cockroach over here? Uh, maybe.
That is a very rough drawing and it all looks heavy right now, but I'll make a lot of it lighter and then a lot of it deeper by just pressing more with the soldering iron. So I'm gonna go ahead and press in my lines, but now you guys can see what I'm doing at least. All right, so that's my snake head. But basically, remember this was not stuck together. I gotta make this into a tube. So when I do it, I start at one end, and you wanna make sure it lines up nice and level. Uh, so I take a, a piece of foam, just a blocker, and I peel both these sides, and I carefully push together using my finger up on top to make sure these are nice and level. Because I want, I want a snake that doesn't have you know, weird lumps or whatever. You can see that I have a black area where there are no scales, and uh, that's gonna be his belly, so that's fine. That's where all that stuff was bunched up, all that uh, fat scrubby. Working my way down this, making sure that they stay level. That's the big deal. So the next thing that I want to address is the, the taper of the snake. A snake isn't the same width all the way down like this tube is. A snake is gonna have, he's gonna be narrow at the neck and a lot of course narrower at the end of the tail. So I'm gonna cut basically into this on the bottom and I'm gonna make it have a taper. And I'm just gonna cut a dart in, meaning I'll take about an inch out uh, this I've decided will be the neck end, and that side is the tail end. So I'll take about an inch out. And I have a straight line here already, and I'm gonna go all the way down to this point here, about this much. I want a nice even taper, a nice even taper for that neck. Okay, so that's what I cut out. This is the neck end and I cut this piece out and it's a long taper uh, about that much. That's gonna give a nice gradual slowdown to where the head is. Uh, so it, it gets thinner and thinner and then there's the snake's head. The tail, I want to be even more, I want it to be even more tapered. Uh, so I'm gonna take out a bigger chunk out of the end. But probably, maybe only this same amount in length, probably a little bit longer but wider here at the base. Much bigger piece that I took out for the tail. Because that tail, I'm gonna shrink it up and it's gonna get a lot smaller. So it looks now like this. And I can close this up and make it a smaller tube after I put contact cement on both of these ends. few minutes uh, the rubber cement the contact cement is going to be dry on the snake body and then uh, I'll be able to push it together and get some attachments made here all right has been a bit of time and now I'm going to glue my snake back together once again I'm making sure they're at the same level and I am pushing them together
Now I go down to the tail. For the tail, um, they don't really come to a super skinny point. So what I'm going to do is just round this with scissors. This is a piece of ceiling hanger wire. You have seen me use it lots of times. It is meant to hold down drop ceilings, and you can get it from Home Depot or Lowe's or pretty much any hardware store that has the stuff to work on drop ceilings. I'm just going to slide it in here through the body. Head width matches up pretty good. I'm going to poke this into here. But the first thing I want to do is I want to scoop out this end so it cups this like a socket. And I can just do that with a blade. And of course, I want to uh, spray some contact cement on there. I will use my cutoff piece of wire to pre-set a hole for that other wire to go into. Just like that. While this is while this glue is drying, I wanted to paint some details on the head, just make those scales pop. And uh, I'm going to put down a little bit of paint. So I just want to dull this green up a little bit. Don't want it to be as bright and shiny green. Uh, it's going to seem really bright, but I don't want it too far off of this. And I don't want to use a lot of it either. I'm just going to line some things. I'm going to do his eyes here in a minute, but I'm ready to put the head on right now. That is a snake. All right, we'll wait for that to dry, then I can pose him. Here he is, the belly is whitened up. Uh, this dried up, so it glued down a little better. Let's flip him over. That's a bit of a snaky pose he has going on now. And now I'm gonna just black in the eyes. The only thing that I would do now that I haven't done is once I got him posed and where I wanted him on set, I would use Glossifier in order to give him a gloss. But he is completely posable uh, because he has that wire running down his length in any snake pose you want. Uh, you could leave wire out of him or just put wire in this much of him and let you know a lot of the body hang free. But even if what he's on has a little bit of movement, he has some movement. And uh, I, that's something that I think is pretty cool. But he's got scales all the way down. Um, he has a nice snake-like taper. And I'm kind of happy with how these guys have turned out. Each snake takes about 45 minutes if you don't count drying time. So if you have a couple things going on or you're making a few snakes, then then you can bounce from snake to snake and project to project and you can probably knock out you know five six snakes in a four five hour period so you know maybe an hour per snake um, but I'm happy with them they look kind of cool so there you go hope that helps Mike Ross ah, go make stuff ah, go make stuff Hit on these.
speak, man.